Redeemer. You would take your Bibles and turn with me to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. We'll be reading a passage of Scripture beginning in John chapter 14 and verse 1. John chapter 14. When you find that passage, please stand with me in reference to the Word of God, as is our custom at Temple Baptist Church. John chapter 14, beginning in verse 1. The Bible says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Father God in heaven, how good it is to be in your house today. Father, we've been looking forward to this very time. Lord, we've been looking forward to this very appointment. Father, that we can come to your house and worship you. Father, we can come to your house and study your holy word. Father, we can come to your house and sing praises unto you. Father, that we can come to your house and lift up our prayers and petitions to you today. Father, we can come to your house and hear the preaching of the Word of God. Father, we can come to your house and see miracles performed, where people leave just a little different than when they arrive. Father, where a sinner leaves saved. Father, that's our prayer today. Lord, that you might bless this preaching of your holy Word today. Father, that it might touch hearts and change lives as only you can. Father, we know that the only freedom this world knows comes from you. Father, Father, it doesn't come from Washington. Father, freedom doesn't come from Jackson. Father, freedom comes from our Lord God in heaven. And Father, we bless you and praise your holy name. We ask your blessing upon our pastor. And Father, we pray that you might make the way today for that one among us that's lost and unsure of their eternal death, destination, that today might be the day that they get saved and get baptized to your honor and glory. In Jesus' name.
all. Just a little bit of volume there, Brother Gary. Thank you. And so, praise the Lord. Uh, he sung about it this morning, and uh, God is good. Uh, when you pray, think to pray for Brother Johnny right now. They're getting out of church as we're going into church, and it is their fall festival uh, day as well as ours, and no, we did not uh, get together on that. That's just the way God works. And you ever see uh, how things work when God gets in something? I mean, he leads us, he guides us, he directs us. The scripture says, uh, in all ways. And so uh, I believe that God is working here this morning. I believe he, uh, you know, he knew he would be here today that needed a blessing. And I pray that the message will encourage your heart. It's kind of like part two of last week's message on heaven. And I don't know about you, but I just, I can't hear enough about my future home. And we might as well go ahead and claim it. You know why? Because it's already ours. Lord Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Now, if we would think about heaven more, we would be troubled less. I'm not saying we can to completely, uh, you know, remove all the doubt and the frustrations and the discouragement. But when we focus our attention on the things that God has gone to prepare for us, did he not say he'd gone to prepare a place for us? Did he not say that? My question to you today, do you believe the words of Jesus Christ? He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Some may be saying, Pastor, aren't you boasting just a little bit when you say you're, you're for sure for heaven as if you're already there? No, we're just claiming the promises of God. We have assurance in our heart and security in knowing that Christ uh, has gone to prepare a place for us. And he said if it were not so, he would have told us. I like 1 John 5, 13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And thank God for that knowledge. Thank God for that assurance. Thank, thank God for that security and knowing it's not about us. We, f we fail down here. Uh, we're complete failures down here without the Lord. You can do nothing without me, he said. But with him, we can do all things. And we need to praise the Lord. I just wish every Christian could memorize 1 John 5, 13. Because it's not a 50-50 proposition. It's not if I'm good, I will inherit heaven. It's not if uh, I keep the commandments, I will inherit heaven. It's not if I am a good person. Why? Because good people do not go to heaven. Did you know that? Only saved people. Only saved people. We've got to have our sins forgiven and covered uh, in the blood of Jesus Christ. Some people spiritualize heaven away. They say, well, it's just a myth. It's just a... Uh, it's just some story that's made up somehow. And how can we know for sure that heaven is our final destination? I like Romans 10, 13. Is it all right if I just use a lot of verses this morning? Kind of stimulate us. Some of you are still asleep, I can tell. And you need a little help. And I need help this morning for sure. Would you pray for me? Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Wait a minute. Let's say it together, class shall be saved. Now that's now and forevermore shall be saved. That's not based on uh, us. That's based on the faithfulness of our God, faithfulness of Jesus Christ who died on the cross, who gave himself as a ransom for all of us, a payment for our sin. Someone's got to pay for your sins. It's either going to be you and you'll pay throughout all of eternity. Don't do that. That's a bad mistake. Thank you, Brother Matthew. Or uh, we can let Jesus Christ pay for our sins. I think he went to a lot of effort in order for us not to have to suffer. Basically, Christ suffered the equivalent of hell on that cross so that you and me would not have to. He did that for you and me. So it's either his payment, that's the ticket to heaven, amen, 
Our payment, if we pay for our sins, we don't go to heaven. Somebody tell me, where do we go? I'm trying to put the jelly on the bottom shelf this morning where everybody can understand. I want you to understand clearly how to go to heaven. I mean, we need a crystal clear presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't need a hope so, think so, maybe so kind of salvation. We need a know so. Y'all forgive me, but there's preaching in my bones. Amen. I'm only the third generation preacher and my son's the fourth. I think it goes back in our bloodline. Somebody help me. That didn't make me the preacher, however, because I ran from the call. But God caught up with this old rebellious young man right here. And I stress the word young. Y'all please remember that. Young preacher you have here. I like Philippians 1 and 6. We studied it in Sunday school class. By the way, if you're not in a class somewhere, please uh, find one. We're studying the book of Philippians. We're going through verse by verse, uh, precept upon precept, line upon line. Being confident. Are you confident about your salvation this morning? You can be. Being confident of this very thing, he which begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. How long are we saved for? Exactly. It's until the day that we see him. He has sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise unto the day of Jesus Christ. Until we see him coming in the clouds of glory. Don't you let your heart be troubled over all these things that are going on down here that he promised would happen. He said it was going to happen just like we're seeing it right now. I mean, there's all kinds of meanness going on. No Baptist preacher can put it clearly into words of all the things that are going on, the fulfillments of God's prophecies that he said would happen in these latter days, but we're seeing them unfold before our very eyes. Goodness gracious. How about John 10, 27? When Jesus said that uh, no man shall pluck them out of my Father's hand. He said that me and the Father are one. He said that no man can take them out of my hand. I love that. I love that thought because we're in the hand of God. And then we're in the hand of Jesus Christ. And then as I mentioned Ephesians 1.13, Ephesians 4.30, that we are sealed. Here we are in God's hand, we're in Jesus' hand, and then the Holy Spirit has wrapped around those two hands. We're sealed by God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and no man can take you out of his hand. Nobody. No one. Amen. I like that, don't you? Let's turn to a companion text. I love Romans chapter number 8. As you're turning there, I'll begin to read. Who shall separate uh, them from the love? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Don't you think that you can't overcome whatever problem and obstacle that you have in your life? Why? We're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ our Lord that loved us and gave himself for us. Notice verse 38, if you're in Romans chapter number 8, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. That said it, didn't it? I mean, that is, if there's any question or doubt in your mind. Some say, well, pastor, uh, you know, no man shall be able to separate us, and no man can take us out of the Father's hand, but I think the devil in all his meanness can somehow sneak us out uh, of the heavenly Father's hand. Okay, who is the devil? The devil is an angel. He's an archangel. Did you not find in those passages, in those verses this morning, did it not say, nor angel, nor principality, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come? None of these things shall separate you from the love of Christ, love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I love the Bible. See, I don't believe in the security of the believer because I'm a Baptist. It's a Baptist, it's a Bible doctrine. It's not a Baptist doctrine. I believe these scriptures because uh, I just believe that more people ought to read the Bible. 
Uh, a lot of these doctrinal questions uh, are, are crystal clear once you just begin to read the Bible for yourself. Don't take someone's word on it. My, by the way, take the verses that I preach to you each and every week. Take them home. Study them. Amen. If there's something that is not exactly right, come to me. Amen. I'll amend uh, what I said, if it is thus saith the Lord. But make sure you have scripture. Make sure you have chapter and verse. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm thinking about 2 Timothy 1.12 where it says, For I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day, the day of the Lord. In other words, until the coming of Jesus Christ, uh, Paul said, I am persuaded that he is able to keep it. He is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I may never get to the message this morning on heaven. Think about 1 Peter chapter number 1, please, and verse number 5. God just keeps giving me verses. Notice it says, we are kept by the power of God through faith uh, unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. That's talking about the, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're kept uh, by his power unto the day of redemption. Do you believe all the scriptures are just your pet verses? Do you take every one of them for face value? Do you take every one of them literally or you just cut and paste the Bible? I'm afraid a lot of churches just go over uh, certain verses and they forget uh, these, perf these, uh, these wonderful trumpet blast verses in the Bible. I like Titus 3 and 5, not the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he has saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. So it's not by our works uh, that we're kept saved. It's not by being good that inherits us the kingdom of God. No, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved, right? Now, present tense. For by grace, uh, through faith, are you saved, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So a gift is something that is given to you unconditionally. It's not based on how good you are. It's not based on how good you want to be. If I were to give those four children of mine presents at Christmas and I say, all right, Jackie, Jenny, Johnny, and Julianne, these are your presents, but these are your chores. If you do not commit the keeping of these chores that Miss Crane and I have given to you, we'll take back those gifts. You know what they would say to me and they would be right in saying so. These are no longer gifts. These, this is a job. It's not a job to serve Jesus Christ. His commandments are not grievous. It's our joy. It's our joy to serve our Lord. Why? Because freely he gave his life. Freely we give back to him in all of his glory. We need to praise him this morning. Hey, if you got up this morning and you breathed that first breath of air and you got a full breath, you ought to praise him this morning. <laughs> Woo! Hey, if you're not in the hospital today, you ought to praise him. Hey, if you're in the hospital, you still need to praise him. Praise him in the good days. Praise him in the bad days. I got a call real early this morning. I'll not mention any names, but one of our dear members has a, a stage four cancer final. They're sending them home to spend the last few days with their loved ones. Can I tell you, God is able. God is able, if he wants this dear one and their, their, their body to be healed, my God is able to do much more than this. I've seen him do it before. I've seen him do it to some of you who are present in the service this morning, and I know he is able and powerful enough to do it again. Here's our prayer for every one of you today. Not my will, but thine. Can you pray that prayer? That's one of the hardest prayers you'll ever have to pray, but we all need to pray it. Uh, on a daily basis. I want to say first of all this morning, I praise God for my everlasting, eternal home called heaven. The word everlasting is mentioned in the Bible over and over, but I love John 3.16. Let's say it together, church, this morning. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I just love to hear it over and over. I don't ever get tired of John 3.16. You see, the modern churches of today don't like this verse. 
Oh, that's why uh, they never quote this verse in any of their services. We're going to quote it over and over and over again. I think every soul on planet earth could be saved by hearing John 3.16. It's God's love gift. It's God's love letter to us who are living here on planet earth. Amen. And I want everyone to be sure for heaven. I'm talking about the everlasting uh, eternity that we'll spend with Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm talking about everlasting life. I'm not talking about until you sin again because we're all sinners. For all have sinned and come short. Of the glory of God, some of you have felt uh, uh, more short than others. Uh, but none of us has hit the perfect mark, have we? And so if we're guilty uh, of, of one sin, the scripture says we're guilty of all of the commandments that we have broken. And we need God's mercy. Don't pray for his justice. Pray for the mercy of the Lord. Because the mercy of the Lord the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Amen. I hope that brings great hope to your heart today. And knowing that God hadn't given up on you, and knowing that, you know what, it's, uh, uh, your life is not over. There's a reason and there's a purpose for you being here or God would have already taken you. Christian, have hope today. He that hath this hope in him. 1 John 3 and 3. Purifieth himself even as he is pure. We're talking about the hope of the resurrection this morning. Amen. We're talking about the beautiful place that God has gone to prepare for us in heaven. You say, preacher, but what if I don't believe in this one doctrine of the Bible, in this place called heaven? Well, if you don't believe in all of them, amen, you've got to believe every word. You've got to believe that this place is a real place. I've talked to so many about this place, and they try to convince me that uh, we were not going up, that we were going to stay here. And I said, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that I've spent all my adult life trying to get people ready and prepared for heaven, and you're spending all your adult life and trying to keep people here and holding them back from going to heaven? I said, wait just a minute. That don't sound right. I said, we better get the good book out and let's compare notes and let's find out apples to apples. Let's see what God says. And I started quoting John 14, let not your heart be troubled. Did you know what? By the time I got to the second verse, they had turned and they had started walking the other way. Now, you can do that if you want. You can walk away from this place called heaven. And you can think we're a sweet pie in the sky kind of people, and that's all we think or, or, or talk about. But I'll tell you what, it's a whole lot better than the alternative. It's better than all the talk that people are all caught up here, here in this world. They want to they wanna be mean and cruel and act ugly towards one another and call each other names and curse and use God's name in vain. Good night in the morning. I'm thinking about a better place as it was sung to us this morning. Praise the Lord. Hey, I'm, I'm for sure for heaven as if I'm already there. How about you? I don't know about you, but I'm going to listen to what God says. Let God be true and every man a liar. I found this to be the case. If a person is wrong, on salvation. They're wrong on a lot of other things. We need to be so very clear about how to be saved and how does one get to heaven and uh, about how it is an everlasting salvation. Amen. Oh, think about it this morning. Think about how uh, true God is. Think about how wonderful he is. Think about how blessed uh, we are in having be, being the recipients of of God's free grace. It's free. But can I say, wait a minute, now let's look at the other side of that thing. It cost God everything. It bankrupted all of heaven. When Jesus Christ came down here to die on this old, uh, to come down here to this old sinful world, uh, it bankrupted all of heaven. I'm sure the angels were in mourning when Jesus Christ left heaven and they were questioning in their minds and their hearts, uh, why is Jesus going to pay for the sins of those down there? Because the angels who left their first estate, uh, they were banished from heaven. They were kicked out with the devil and a third of all the angelic halls. The truth is, God loves man for some reason. Have you ever wondered about Psalm number 8 where it says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? I think that's a little conversation with the angels up there thinking, well, Why does they get second chances? We didn't get a second chance. Well, I'm glad I serve a second chance God today. I'm glad you serve a second chance God today. You know, if the truth were known, 
And he saw me in my rebelliousness. He saw my uh, wicked deeds. And he looked down out of heaven and could see all that meanness. He could have gave up on me. He could have given up on you. But he didn't. He had mercy. And by the way, this morning, God don't look on our record anymore. God don't look on our sins anymore. Our sins are as far as the east is from the west, according to Psalm 103. You'll find it there. They're buried in the sea of his forgetfulness. Gone, gone, what sins are you talking about? I don't remember them anymore. You know whose record I have today? God looks in the record book and he looks up my name and he says, oh, let me see how many sins uh, John Stephen Crane has. And he looks over there and he finds the place where my name is written. And underneath it says, there are no sins that are recorded against this man's name. He said, uh, he finds under there, he has the record of Jesus Christ. He says, Stephen Crane has not committed any sins as far as I can see. You know why? They've been washed in the blood of Christ. There's not one sin that's going to slide under the door of heaven. It has to be washed and purified in the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me holy? Jesus Oh, precious is the flow. That washes what is snow. No other fount I know. No other name but Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, praise God today. Somebody praise him. Amen. Sometimes I feel like I'm all alone up here, but not this morning. When you brag on Jesus, if I be lifted up from the earth, what does he say? He said, I'll draw all men unto me. And so tonight, today, listen, the gospel of Jesus is the death, the burial, uh, and the resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ. And so, what are we doing when we say that God's salvation is not eternal? We're trampling underfoot the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're saying that his blood on the cross was not sufficient to pay for all of my sins. Because you know what? Satan is hounding you, and Satan is he, he's, uh, uh, he, he's ca causing great traumatic turmoil in your mind and heart. He's trying to make you feel like you're insufficient. He's trying to make you feel like uh, that you don't belong uh, in heaven. But may I assure you this morning, because of all these verses that we've quoted to you, listen to 1 Corinthians 1 and verse number 8. The Bible says, who shall also confirm you unto the end. That's how, God, that's how much God loves you. That's how much God loves you. My great-grandfather, let me give you a little story, and we'll get to the end here in a minute. My great-grandfather was a member of a different faith, and, uh, but, uh, you, you know, on his deathbed, he called for my great-grandmother's pastor, which was not of his faith. They both went to different churches. Now, wouldn't that be odd? Great-grandpa went to one church. Great-grandma went to the other church. But on his deathbed, he didn't call for his preacher. He called for his wife's preacher. And he got assurance of his salvation. But, you know, there was some... Uh, terrible uh, things that happened on account of that because some of the grandchildren respected my great-grandfather so much that they followed his line of thinking instead of the Bible way of thinking. And some of them are unsure to this day because he lived all of his life with a big question mark whether or not he was saved or not. Folks, if there's a big question mark about your salvation today, get it settled. Get it settled because there's too much at stake. Your eternity's at stake. And those that are following behind you, they're watching your steps. They're paying attention to what you believe. Number two, my position in heaven is secured, but my condition down here is constantly needing improvement. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? If the truth has ever been told, it was told this morning that my position is secure up there. It's everlasting, according to God. But my condition down here, it's variable. It changes. I mean, look, this flesh is carnal. This flesh will fail you. The arm of the flesh will fail you. Thank God our Lord won't fail. That's why you shouldn't base your salvation on your fa failing flesh. You should not base your salvation on your temporary condition because our condition variable is variable. My faith is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. 
That's why, as a Christian, we need to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to grow, Christian. We need to get assurance of our salvation. When you get the assurance of your salvation nailed down, that'll be the day you have joy. Now, the devil can't steal your salvation, but he can steal the joy of your salvation. He's done it to me before, but I have vowed to my Lord he's not going to get it again. Amen. He's not going to steal the joy of my salvation. Listen, in his presence is fullness of joy, Psalm 1611. And at thy right hand are pleasures forever. More. He can only do what you allow him to do. You to resist him, and he will flee from you. Is that not what your scripture says? And so there's so many improvements that we need to make uh, in our life before that day uh, of the Lord, the scripture says. Amen. But we are, thank God, we are sealed, and thank God uh, we're kept by the power of the Lord, or every one of us would lose it. We would. I, I lose m most everything. Uh, I I spend a lot of my day just trying to find things that I've lost. Y'all forgive me. I have a weakness. You don't have any weaknesses, but I have one. Don't look at me like that. I know some of you are thinking the same thing, right? That's me. That's me. See, our mind gets tired. Our body gets hungry. We get weak in our flesh. We do things. We say things. We act ways that, that Christians is unbecoming to Christians. Does that mean I'm not saved, Pastor, when I don't feel saved? You can't ever find in the Bible where you have to feel saved. You're not saved based on a feeling. You're saved on the fact that you've placed your full faith in the finished work of the cross of Calvary. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lastly, and I'm done. How long has it been since you've been uh, able, uh, to, with God's grace that is, to be up on that high mountain with the Lord? I'm talking about when you sensed his very present. I'm not talking about feeling, but I'm thankful to God when he does give us a little feeling. We're not promised that feeling. But thank God when he comes and he comforts us. That's the aid of the Holy Spirit. The paraclete is the comforter. Amen. He comforts us in our losses. He encourages us in our present state of discontentness. Amen. Why? So it'll help you press on towards that perfect mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm saying I've noticed uh, uh, those people who've gotten out of the race, those people who are the, another sad statistic, uh, uh, they, they haven't been able to deal with this one issue, that their Christian life uh, got to this state, that got to this uh, terrible mundane state, uh, that there was no desire to move forward. They just, they were happy. They were, they were satisfied, saved and satisfied. They were satisfied in neutral. They were satisfied. Growing in grace. Just coming and, and, and saying their little prayer or singing their little song, but they weren't growing uh, in grace. Child of God, we need to grow. God's looking at all of us this morning. He wants us to grow in grace. He wants us to look unto him, the author and the finish of our faith. Who for the joy, there's joy. You talking about some joy? Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. You just don't know what I'm going through, Pastor. Have you ever seen what Jesus went through? Hey, when you get in a pit, when you get in a, a terrible state of affairs, don't think about your sorrow. Don't think about your pain. Don't think about all the turmoil you're going through. Think about what he went through so you could have eternal life. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No. There's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. And so today, think about it. He took our sins and our sorrows and he made them his very own. He nailed them to his cross. Thank God this morning that our sins have been forgiven. You hadn't heard anything else today. It might have been worth your trip down here just to hear that your record is clear in heaven. Your position is secure in heaven. Jesus Christ is sitting on the right home, right hand throne of God, and he's saying to me to tell you, everything's all right in my Father's house. He's on the throne today. He's making intercession for you uh, and for me. Amen? We can't help what's going on in the world. Uh, oh, no, we can't help all these things that are coming to pass. Uh, but look, we're not of this world. 
We're just passing through this old sinful world. Look, I've lived in seven states and three countries. And all I can tell you is, I've been here for the last 23 years as your pastor. Thank you for having me in, Miss Crane. But can I say this? Miss Crane and I, she, she makes these little, you know, she's like every good wife. She gives me the elbow from time to time. And she said, honey, please don't watch the news. It's not please don't. You're not. You know why she says that? She said, because we need a sweet preacher in the pulpit. And if you watch all what's going on out there, especially here at this election time, she said, you'll be, you'll be as mean as all them rattlesnakes out there that are talking all this stuff. And you know what? When I get to heaven, I don't want to get to the beam of seat of God and stand before my God and have to give an account to my God for the life that I've lived here on this planet. And him say, you're bitter. You could have been better, but you're bitter. He, he won't say, well done, thou good and faithful. I like what Brother Walter said. <clears throat> he said he, he won't say good and faithful pastor or good and faithful evangelist or good, good and faithful ev uh, missionary. He's going to say, we're all on the same level with God, right? Thou good and faithful servant. Have we been serving the Lord, church? Have we been serving the Lord with gladness? Have we been coming before his presence with singing? In heaven, listen. There will be no more negative character assassinations. Amen. No one's going to be running down anybody else. There's going to be peace and contentment in our Father's house. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, listen, I'm saying today, don't just come to church uh, and seek for peace twice a year, Christmas and Easter. Some people are just tipping their hat at God, and Lord, bless me if you can, and, and, and Lord, I'm here again, and can, can you fill my cup, Lord? Well, he can't fill it until you empty out. We got a lot to empty, believe me, me included. We down here on this planet, listen, I'm looking at you today, church. I've got one brown eye and one green eye. One's from my grandpa I mentioned a while ago. One, the brown eye is from Grandma Roper. She was the Indian. The other green one's from my German grandfather. I just want you to do me a favor. I want you to choose your friends wisely. Because I can predict and I, I can prophesy of your future five years from now. I can predict where you'll be and which direction you're going by the friends that you associate with. You say, preacher, I didn't know you was a prophet. No, I'm not a prophet, nor the son of a prophet, but I can say some things about those who you associate with. They will drag you down. You need friends that will lift you up. You need friends that will encourage you. You need friends that are spiritual enough to help you along life's way. You know, that's what a true friend is, isn't it? Hey, if heaven is our home, and I know that it is, the Bible says there's shouting over there. There's rejoicing in the presence of the angels over one who repents and over the 99 who need no repentance. Can I leave you this thought this morning? We want to be happy on earth as it is in heaven. You know what we need to do? Week after week, month after month, year after year, we could make heaven happy by bringing souls to this altar every week and presenting them to God and say, Lord, here's another one that wants to trust you as their Savior. We're to be leading people to Christ. We're to be persuading, as Paul, uh, King Agrippa said, almost, Paul, thou hast persuaded me to be a Christian. You know what? We'll make heaven happy. By the time we get there uh, and all those that come behind us, all of heaven will be shouting, amen? You know, Jesus said this when he was 12 years old. He said, I must be about my father's business. There's a business for you and me to be involved with. It's not the business of this world. Even though we have to, we, we have to, we have to feed our family, uh, we have to have a livelihood, and uh, there's some money that has to be made, of course. We're worse than an infidel if we don't provide for our own family. But we better be preparing for heaven. We better be getting our ducks in a row and our houses in order. And we better be ready to make flight final here shortly. I wish I could sing this morning. I'd sing... A song or two, amen, I could sing, look for me, I'll be there too, amen. amen, I could sing when they ring those golden bells, I think about that pearl, pearly uh, gate there in heaven, 
I was sitting up here on the stage and I was thinking about all my loved ones. I believe some of them are at the gate waiting on us. I know that there's rejoicing in heaven today because there's people getting saved. If there is a soul here in this church this morning, you've heard the word of God. If you're not 100% sure that you're going to heaven with us, why don't you make it today? The Bible says today is a day of salvation. Let's bow our heads, shall we, and pray. Father,